The readings will now be given by Fairley from Maryland. The Bible. Mark. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little farther thence, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogues and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. John. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Galatians. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which I tell you before, 
as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. The relative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. When speaking of God's children, not the children of men, Jesus said, The kingdom of God is within you. That is, truth and love reign in the real man, showing that man in God's image is unfallen and eternal. Jesus beheld in science the perfect man who appeared to him where sinning mortal man appears to mortals. In this perfect man, the Savior saw God's own likeness, and this correct view of man healed the sick. Thus Jesus taught that the kingdom of God is intact, universal, and that man is pure and holy. Man is not a material habitation for soul. He is himself spiritual. To the ritualistic priest and hypocritical Pharisee, Jesus said, The publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Jesus' history made a new calendar, which we call the Christian era. But he established no ritualistic worship. He knew that men can be baptized, partake of the Eucharist, support the clergy, observe the Sabbath, make long prayers, and yet be sensual and sinful. Today we commemorate not only our nation's civil and religious freedom, but a greater even, the liberty of the sons of God, the inalienable rights and radiant reality of Christianity, whereof our master said, the works that I do shall he do. And the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, with knowledge obtained from the senses, but the kingdom of God is within you, within the present possibilities of mankind. It is the purpose of divine love to resurrect the understanding and the kingdom of God, the reign of harmony already within us. Through the word that is spoken unto you are you made free. Abide in his word and it shall abide in you. And the healing Christ will again be made manifest in the flesh, understood and glorified. Jesus came announcing truth and saying not only the kingdom of God is at hand, but the kingdom of God is within you. Hence, there is no sin, for God's kingdom is everywhere and supreme, and it follows that the human kingdom is nowhere and must be unreal. Jesus taught and demonstrated the infinite as one and not as two. He did not teach that there are two deities, one infinite and the other finite, for that would be impossible. He knew God as infinite, and therefore as the all in all. And we shall know this truth when we awake in the divine likeness. Heaven is spiritual. Heaven is harmony. Infinite, boundless bliss. The dying or the departed enter heaven in proportion to their progress in proportion to their fitness to partake of the quality 
and the quantity of heaven. One individual may first awaken from his dream of life and matter with a sense of music, another with that of relief from fear or suffering, and still another with a bitter sense of lost opportunities and remorse. Heaven is the reign of divine science. Material thought tends to obscure spiritual understanding to darken the true conception of man's divine principle, love, wherein and whereby soul is emancipate and environed with everlasting life. Our great teacher has said, Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Within man's spiritual understanding of all the divine modes, means, forms, expression, and manifestation of goodness and happiness. Christian science is irrevocable, unpierced by bold conjecture's sharp point, by bald philosophy, or by man's inventions. It is divinely true, and every hour in time and in eternity will witness more steadfastly to its practical truth. And science is not pantheism, but Christian science. Chief among the questions herein, and nearest my heart, is this. When shall Christianity be demonstrated according to Christ? In these words, neither shall they say, Lo, here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you.